James Gunn, uh, who who wrote and directed that special, that sort of name dropped me in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which I had no idea he was going to do. I knew James. I had done a tiny, tiny little movie with him in Shreveport, Louisiana. And um, I liked him as a director. And then his next job was this massive, you know, Marvel starting this whole franchise. So that was a shock to me when I went to the theater on a, you know, a, a matinee on opening weekend and, and they were talking about me. I got a chance to watch uh, your episode of Carpool Karaoke, the series. I really enjoyed it. Uh, how much fun did you guys uh, have on the show? Well, I, I had a great time. I, mean, I don't do stuff like this very often. My brother <laughs> does it very often, so he's a little more used yeah. to it. Um, plus, I was the designated driver because uh, my brother was drunk through the whole thing. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I avoid. Yeah. I mean, what was really terrifying, Brian, is that. Yeah. I, I get up to an intersection and there are about 10 cameras and speakers and monitors. And, you know, in New York, taking a right turn and their pedest pedestrians really have the right of way. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't see anything. And mm -hmm. my brother was not really uh, looking out to see who I was about to run over. So <laughs> luckily I made it through without killing anybody. You did great. You you were you were a very confident uh, driver, especially under those uh, yeah, circumstances. It was I mean, driving in New York in the best circumstances is a, is a little bit of a of, of a uh, freak show, you know, because part part of what's really hard now, I find, is that, um, you know, so many people are on their cell phones and, and they're crossing the street and, and watching the cell phones. So you have to be super, super aware of, uh, I mean, you should always be aware of pedestrians. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, to me, the, the it was it was fun. The most the frightening part was. I'm not really used to um, uh, going up to people, you know, that aren't expecting to see me, you know, and there's a couple of situations that we did in the show where we were kind of a surprise, I guess, you know, two times. And I was like, God, I hope this goes OK. I'm, I'm you know what I mean? I, I, I yeah. but I think that's that kind of adds a little edge to it. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, it was a bit of danger there for sure. <laughs> a little danger, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, one of the things, one of the things you two got to do was obviously with it being carpool karaoke, sing some songs. You were singing uh, one of your own songs as well as songs from uh, uh, bands of uh, families and brothers and s siblings. So you know, growing up, which family groups were your favorite? Well, I guess. Um... I guess the Jackson Five yeah. would probably be uh, Smothers Brothers. I thought I still hear them on uh, Sirius Radio. Those guys were really funny. Uh, were other brother groups. Uh, well, the Everlys. I mean, th I had uh, Kevin and I have uh, uh, sisters and with this one cousin who was a really, really good vocal arranger, and they would sing a cappella Everly Brothers when I was about five or six years old, and that sound that those harmonies still live in my musical life i think all those i loved all those bands um all those brother groups i would say that the 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 family band that to me has kind of held on through i think the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s is the isley brothers yes uh, yes, yes yes they have just done I mean, their hang time is just kind of incredible through a lot of different decades. And um, boy, there's so many when you really think about it. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's been a lot of good ones. Absolutely. And Michael, this question's for you. Um, what was your favorite part of filming Carpool Karaoke? Uh, getting through the day in one piece. And um, I, I, I think the, if I have to say my most favorite moment was when this young woman, you know, I'm I'm in the driver's seat. Kevin is under a, a shroud of some kind, and our windows open. And the what, what I'm supposed to do is interview the people walking by on Kevin's right. side. This this uh, one young lady, I uh, said, "Excuse me, come on over. Can I ask a question? Uh, what do you think about the actor Kevin Bacon?" And she had no idea who he was. And then he popped up, and she still didn't know who he was. So I, I, <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, my life of being with a celebrity is always 
everybody is just you know making a big fuss and then all of a sudden to find someone who has no idea who he was that was that was great sorry kevin that was my favorite i think she was a plant i think she was a plant i don't think that was real uh, oh that's it yeah yeah couldn't couldn't be real <laughs> Well, Kevin, yeah, I, I, that's interesting you bring that up because, Kevin, I wanted to ask you this. Um, when you were going through that, do you enjoy it when fans uh, talk about the films that they remember you from because you had such a long career in TV and films? Um, what was your reaction when you were listening to those fans when you were hiding? Just talk about where they were, where they remember you from. Well, it's a little terrifying because what in the back of your mind, you, you think somebody's going to go, oh, my God, I hate that guy. He is the <laughs> But even that would have been sort of funny, I think. Um, yeah, listen, I, uh, I think a lot of people uh, who are in the, the kind of you know situation that I am talk about the downside a lot of being recognizable. But really, I mean, it's 99.9% good. And I always like to acknowledge that. People come up and say mostly really nice stuff. Even if they, you know, I mean, and once in a while, there's someone like this, this woman has no idea who I am. And, and that's, that's good, too. I mean, that, that, you know, whatever teaches you something about the world. And, you know, you don't, you, you don't start to believe your own legend too much, you know, so um, it's, 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 it's great. I don't, uh, I don't, I ever, don't like to look that gift horse in the mouth. Absolutely. And as a duo and as a band, you guys have been performing since um, the mid nineties and you've released your share of albums. Is there a new album on the way? There always seems to be. And I think both of us feel like, well, that last one, that's the last one we're going to do because we're, we're already going to come up with the songs, but uh, all we, our last one was re released in the spring. It was an EP of five songs. And my brother is a very prolific songwriter and I'm starting to, you know, we're starting to work on new songs and uh, I think we have a couple now in the in the in the can or close to it. So, um, yeah, I think I think there is a new one. And um, our timing usually works out that we try to release something in the spring and we try to go out and play over the summer when, um, you know, I'm off from my teaching responsibilities and Kevin's, you know, we fit in tours when we can fit him in. There's no real plan to it, but we have fantastic management, fantastic agency and, and staff and stuff. So we can sort of uh, be really, really flexible and work around our own, our own careers. Of course. And Michael, this question's for you also. Um, you play multiple instruments. You uh, grew up with music. But what made you want to get involved in music? I had no choice. It just was such a yeah. presence uh, in my life. I think that the first thing I fell in love with, with were the actual instruments. Um, my mother started me on cello lessons when I was about six or seven. And I can remember when they first brought the cello over. Uh, I remember the room I was in. I remember the lighting. I remember the, the lacquer, what it smelled like. It was it, it was like a presence to me. And um, I never really got to be that great on the cello. Um, or I'm not really a virtuoso on any instrument. But then the next set of instruments were um, fretted instruments banjo, mandolin, guitars, basses. Um, and I took to them very easily. And, and later on, I played oboe. So I really got a huge range of exposure um, to instruments. Plus the fact that our father being an architect, um, uh, my parents bought this old funky townhouse in Philadelphia, right in the middle, skinny four story, 15 feet wide. And they transformed the entire ground floor which i can only describe as one big big speaker and the speakers were were in the kitchen in this huge soffit with gigantic um subwoofers and an altec lansing horns and it was controlled 50 feet away next to the front door so the entire first floor was really a, a music um uh um was dedicated to music more than yeah. anything else. And I was on the second floor and my parents had fantastic taste in music and they loved all kinds of music. And as I was falling asleep, it would waft up the stairs and I would fall asleep to it. And in my job as a musician, which you know, to, to, it's a long way of answering your question. But <laughs> no. Yeah. I never, I never thought of anything. I'm one, one of those people that's really lucky. I can, I can do it. I have a source and I've been able to make a living at it for years and years and years. So I'm a very lucky man. Absolutely. And Kevin, for you, when you look at um, 
your career in music and growing up, um, how did you fall in love with music? Well, you know, my older brother, uh, you know, a lot of times you, you know, uh, aspire to be like and do things mm-hmm. like your older brother. And and Mike is nine years older than me. So by the time I have my earliest memories, he was already playing in bands, writing songs or practicing, you know, some instrument or something. So uh, certainly I had the the same experience, I guess, of, of you know, my parents approach to music. But for me, it was more him and also uh our uh my older sister hilda who was also a guitar player and kind of a a uh a folky sort of uh joni mitchell uh judy collins type singer and um so yeah that was it of course and um michael this question is for you uh the band has toured all over the place over the last uh 25 plus years but is there a place or a venue that you haven't been where you would like like to perform? Yeah, uh, everywhere. I mean, um, mm-hmm. we did a tour of Germany, um, and one of the neat things is when you when you're in a band, you get booked in a little town that would not be on the tourist roster, and you know we we get a chance to see the country from a different point of view, not uh, not from a tourist because we're there to work. Um, so I'd love to play. We did one kind of gig in France. I'd love to do another gig in France. Uh, we played in Japan. I'd love to go back there. Um, I'd like to go to Australia. I'd love to play in Africa. I'd love to play in Laos. Uh, I can't think of any place I wouldn't like to. The trouble is when you travel abroad, it, it, it there's a whole big range of more expense and more planning and more, more dif- difficulty. So, um, most of the time we're kind of playing on the East coast or California and Texas. And, and it's so really nice in the States too, because you get to places that you would never normally go. And that's the thing I really love about touring. And Kevin, this question is for you. Uh, you got a chance to perform in the guardians of the galaxy holiday special towards the end of that show. Um, I, I, you know, that, that special was really great. I really enjoyed you in it. So, um, how did you, how much did you enjoy playing a key role in that special and being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, super fun. Um, James Gunn, uh, who who wrote and directed that special, um, uh, sort of name dropped me in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which I had no idea he was going to do. I knew James. I had done a tiny, tiny little movie with him in Shreveport, Louisiana. And um, I liked him as a director. And then his next job was this massive, you know, Marvel starting this whole franchise. So that was a shock to me when I went to the theater on a, you know, a a matinee on opening weekend and and they were talking about me. I was like, how did that just happen? Because, you know, we had sort of lost touch and he didn't talk to me about it. And then quite a few years later, because that first movie was probably eight or nine years ago, he said to me, um, so I'm doing this, uh, I want to do this Christmas special and, um, you know, you're in it. So I'm going to send it to you, but, you know, uh, make sure you're sitting down when you read it. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I didn't even have to, knowing James and knowing his sensibility, yeah, I, I would have said yes without even reading it. I just knew that it was going to be fun and and cool. And then, you know, things got sort of delayed with the pandemic and this yeah. and that. And then finally we got a chance to uh, to do it. We did it, shot it right in the middle of uh, while they were doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3 down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, one of the other things that I believe you're uh, set to appear in is Beverly Hills Cop actually fully going to be streaming on Netflix soon. What can you tell us about the upcoming film? If you can say anything Absolutely at all. Absolutely nothing. I'm I'm smart to secrecy around the project, but I mean, I think it's well known that Eddie's going to be in it and that a lot yeah. of the uh, the people from the uh, from the original are are coming back. You know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I, I, the one thing I can tell you is that I play a Beverly Hills cop. OK, <laughs> sounds great. Looking forward to that. And uh, the last question for me before I let you guys go and this question is for both of you uh, with Christmas right around the corner. What are you two looking forward to the most this holiday season? Well, we'll be um, down in our house in Pennsylvania. And as you can see behind me, we've uh, yeah. started decorating, uh, which is a lot of work, particularly with my wife, Betsy, who really likes to go all out, um, all in, all out on Christmas decorations. So uh, I have um, 
I finished up my term at City University of New York uh, on next Tuesday, and then I'm off for a month, which which would really be nice because this time of year uh, I'm always very busy with my scoring and uh, school, and it's nice to have a little bit of a break. And I'm looking forward to, to doing nothing really. Of course, hey Kevin, what about you? Oh, you know, we uh, have a really big, big uh, Thanksgiving that was super fun this year because of, you know, things being a little bit farther along in terms of the, you know, for a couple of years, we were really able to get together as a family. And this year we had 30 of us, which was really great. And then for Christmas, um, we sort of tend to dial it down and, and it'll just be my wife and, and my kids and their partners. And we're looking forward to that. We're, uh, we have very low key Christmas and it's just the way we like it. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Well, Michael, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on everything you're doing and happy holidays to you.